If you saw that next level of you, even if you lived it for an hour, a day, a week, a month, guess what? It's in you. you think about people in your life, or even you, uh, in the past, not you now, but you in the past, or people in your life who went after something, and then a couple obstacles got in the way, and then all of a sudden the obstacles got stacked in their way. Like, this was going wrong, I got it, I got it. And then like four or five things went wrong at once, and they retreated or gave up. I think that's when you are this close to your breakthrough. And I think that's when most people retreat. I think that's when most people give up. So all that I shared so far is to commend you for being here right now. You know, people will get my book like Millionaire Success Habits or Success Courses or anybody's, Tony Robbins, Brendan Bouchard, any one of my friend's courses. They'll go through the course and try it, but not be plugged into something like this. And that would be like going to the gym for a month like crazy. No carbs, eating, eating lean, veggies and protein, a little bit of uh, uh, good carbs, sustainable carbs, uh, complex carbs. Um, going to the gym like crazy, getting in like a month you see a change and then just stopping and then just hoping that maintains, hoping that continues. And, and we know that's not the case. Your body will go back to the way it was if you eat the same and, and don't work out the same. So why would our minds be any different? right? We might get inspired. I hope I motivate you. I hope I inspire you. I hope other people do. If it drives you, I'm, I, I love this industry as long as they're fueling you with what you want. But it is like the gym. I mean, I, I listen. The reason that, that I want to talk about this tonight, I just got done for the third time in seven years reading Dale Carnegie's book, Stop Worrying and Start Living. It is such a good book. Oh my God, was it ahead of its time. When you read and the research and the time and the effort that guy put in that book, yes, we've all done so many of the things he talks about and so many people have kind of ripped off that book and like out of chapters of that book, people have made their own complete books, right? But man, that book just was something special to me. And what I've been doing over the last 15 days of listening to it. It's a 10 hour book. Um, I burned through it in the last, let's say 15, 20 days. It took me longer than I thought. Some days I want to listen to music if I'm running up a mountain. It's hard to listen to Dale sometimes, but uh, when you're trying to exercise, but I do every day. And I've been taking notes for over a month on the things that I think are important to you. And that's what I want to go over today. It's, it's Dale Carnegie inspired, uh, but Dean Graziosi translated. I just made that up. I hope that sounded good. Right now, before we get started, I want you to think of before I start talking about worry and how to kill worry and why, what it does to you, what it does to your success, I want you to start thinking about right now, if you have a piece of paper or even on your phone, write down what you feel your biggest worry you're facing right now is. And let's, let's talk through it. But I want to talk about what worry does to you as someone who wants another level of life. Uh, you're here because you want more. You want to tap into your full potential. You know there's more. You know there's more gas in the tank. You know there's another level of you. Not just the, the, the next level of money will follow the next level of you, right? You, you, you've had those, uh, again, I don't want to generalize, but wherever you are in life, you've had moments of clarity that were whole another level, right or wrong. You've been in that flow state. You've had those days where you're just like, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm, I'm badass. I can do this. And you want that feeling but then some things rob it, right? A lot of times worry robs it, stress robs it, um, you know, things not going right, and, and then you fall back. If you saw that next level of you, even if you lived it for an hour, a day, a week, a month, guess what? It's in you. And what's cluttering is the thoughts that are going on, the worry that's happening. And even, you know, even if you say, I'm not a worry wart, some of you watching right now are worry warts, if that's a, if that's a word, right? You've heard that forever. Um, but some of you don't realize that the things you are thinking about are holding you back from your full potential. Meaning, like the way I look at it is what worry does, um, I was a mechanic as a kid, right? So I know engines. And a lot of times with older engines, if a spark plug went bad or a, a cylinder, a piston was, uh, the seal around the piston was broken or it, uh, an eight cylinder engine can run on seven cylinders. An eight-cylinder engine could actually run on four cylinders. And I remember when an eight-cylinder engine would run on, say, six cylinders. It would be like, duh, 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 duh. but you could still go down the road. It would still drive. And then I'd get in there, change the spark plugs, fix it, and all of a sudden, this duh, 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 went, Hoo, and it got completely quiet. And then the engine would just go and be faster, quicker. And, and it was because they were running on all cylinders. So when worry is a part of your life, realizing it or not, subconscious or not, 
you aren't running on all eight cylinders if you're an eight-cylinder engine. And, and what my goal is today, uh, my goal is today is to give you some tools and, and literally some notes I took from this amazing book to really just get you thinking about the worry that you have in your life and how can we just nuke it. Now, now saying just nuking worry sometimes could be like, Dean, you don't understand what I'm facing. I have, you know, I'm doing good. I'm not complaining, but I got a lot. I get that. But everybody does. I would bet to say, you know, that the hundreds of people that are going to watch this all have worry. We all have stuff. I'm going through some stuff right now. Um, but how I handle that stuff is the result of my life. It's the outcome of who I am. It's the outcome of who, who I get to be. So what worry does to you? When you worry, it robs you of your full potential. I want you to get really upset with worry right now. Think about in your life the things that you've worried about that didn't come true, that caused you a lot of angst and anxiety. Did you, have you ever been in a relationship that you worried about for years? Have you worried about a job for years? Have you worried about things going wrong for years? Did you worry about the last presidential election and what it was going to do to you? Did you worry about when the economy shifted, even if you got hit bad? I'm bringing this up because worry has robbed so much of your life, even if you're not the person considered a worry wart. It just has. And when you think of it that way, I want you to get disturbed and pissed at worry because we get to create what goes on in our lives. I know that's a big statement, but our consciousness, whatever, if you want to use the word consciousness, our thoughts, what we think about on a daily basis, whatever word terminology that fits you, that's what causes us stress and worry or what causes us to focus on another level. So what has worry cost you? I, I, you know, I'm, this is casual. We're all sitting here today, and I, wanna, I, wanna, I encourage you to write down some of the things in your life that worry has cost you. What, what did you worry about that didn't come true? What did you worry about that did come true and you were still okay? What did you worry about that came true? It sucked going through it, but when you looked on the other side, you wouldn't change it for anything in the world because it made you a better person. It made you stronger, faster, quicker. Where is the smoothest stone in the stream? It is always, always in the roughest part of the stream right? Those who stand at the rocks that are on the sidelines never get any water on them. They're fine, but they're rough. You want to live abundantly. You need to jump in the toughest part of the stream. Worry is going to happen, but there's a way to combat it so it doesn't have to be worry. It can just be part of the process. So I want to start with kind of the 30,000 foot view of worry and how I approach it with my kids. Uh, and this is stuff I've learned through reading books, being a part of it, generating, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in my life, being blessed to sell millions of books, all that stuff. I'm not bragging, but I've failed miserably to create all that. Like when I say, hey, I've generated hundreds of millions of dollars, what I really want to say is if you knew the shit I went through, the struggles I went through, the failures, the sleepless nights, my family telling you, you I'm nuts. The publisher saying no one will ever buy this book. It's a, it's a 250 page conversation. It's written by an eighth grader. I mean, all of those things, when, when things were, you know, when I ran out of money and was completely broke living on credit cards, like I, I've been in those places. And when I look back, I realized I wasn't always as good as I am now with handling worry, and I'm still not perfect. But I realized I didn't have to worry about all it. In fact, all of that happened to me exactly the way it was supposed to. It built me. It, be, it, it made me the man I am. It allowed me to be here and share with you guys today. Um, so I want you to think about this that you've probably heard me say before. you probably read about it in Millionaire Success Habits. But we're talking live now, and let's get real. Because if it's not a part of your everyday life, then it's like going to the gym once in a while. So solution-based thinking. Solution-based thinking has to be a, you have to remind yourself every moment of every day. I know that sounds extreme, right? I wouldn't care. You should write solution-based thinking in your car, put it a sticky on the fridge, put it, have an alarm go off every day at three o'clock on your phone, seven o'clock on your phone that says solution-based thinking because that immediately kills, it's one of the ways to kill worry. Because what happens is we have this tendency, we were taught to worry about things like as if worrying will solve the problem. Has worrying ever, let me ask you, 
Has worrying ever solved any problems in your life? Ever. I can't believe that's going to happen. I'm going to lose this job. And then if I lose the job, you know, how, how do I, if you're one of my students, how, if I don't get real estate going, and has it ever solved the problem? Or have you, when you stepped away from the worry and went after it and took action, you solved the problem? Or you rode through the shit. If it, was wrong, if it went wrong, you rode through it. You learned from it. came out on the other side. So here's something that I've been working on with my kids since they were little. And I love, I love this because I have to make it simple for them. And I'm not saying I've got to make it simple for you, but I do this for me too. Again, we've got to make it part of our life. When you are worried about something, when something goes wrong, when you're stressed about it, instead of thinking what happened and whose fault it is and why they did it or someone did it or how could this happen to me, which is very easy to think of all those things, what if you could train your brain? to immediately grab a piece of paper. And I, I say paper. If you're younger, you probably have barely write on a piece of paper, but I do. You see, there's my notes here. Um, I'm always writing because when I write, it gets into my head. What if you said, wow, this is bugging me. Why do I have this knot in my stomach? This is bugging me so much. What if you just grabbed a piece of paper and wrote down three possible solutions? Because sometimes we get in a frame of mind. It's like, nothing can fix this. Nothing can fix this. You don't understand what happened. It's not true. Someone's been through exactly what you're going through and they came out okay on the other side. You may have been through exactly what you're going through and come out on the other side. There's people, you know, during the depression, so many people during this last recession, so many people lost everything and worried and worried and worried, but nothing changed in their life till the worry was over and they started taking action towards the solutions. Why not shorten the gap? How long do you want to suffer between the worry to the solution? When all I know is when you start working on the solution, the worry goes away.